Hey guys, this is Dennis from Vintage CrossFit. I'm sitting here with Scott from Fitness Analytics. We're gonna discuss some of the data behind stage one of the 2020 CrossFit Games. Scott, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and what Fitness Analytics is? Sure, of course. So, I'm a member here at Vintage. Um, been here for eight months now, maybe? I don't know, anyway, been doing CrossFit for probably four or five years. Um, definitely as a hobby, far from a pro. But my day job is uh, data science. So I was a math major, economics major back in the day in college. Uh, been working in the manufacturing industry since then, doing a lot of data analytics. Um, CrossFit is my passion, like I said. So I took some of that professional skill, merged it with my favorite hobby, CrossFit, and created fitness analytics, which is data science for fitness. Awesome, excited to talk today. We're gonna to talk about stage one of the 2020 CrossFit Games. This followed a unique format because of the COVID pandemic. All the athletes competed and did the workouts at their own home gyms. Day one had four events. The first event was Friendly Fran. Three rounds for time, 21 thrusters, 21 chest to bar pull-ups. The men's weight was 115 pounds and the women's weight was 85 pounds. Scott, tell us what jumps out of you for Friendly Fran. Of course, so I'm just gonna go really statistical in all of my analysis here. So on Fran, um, okay, the first thing we're gonna talk about is volume scores. So let me explain what that is quickly. We've broken down historic workouts from previous opens, regionals, and games to kind of say, okay, what's an average ask, what's a high ask, and what's a low ask, right? So first example here, we're gonna talk about the chest, the bars, and Fran. Scale of one to 10, how big of a volume ask were the 63 chest of bars? And it actually only ranks in at a three. That seems really low, but then you remember some of the open workouts, like the overhead squat, chest of bar, and I'm repeating over and over again that you extended as time went on. That ended up in the hundreds up to 200 chest of bar reps, maybe total. So 63, not that big of a volume ask here. On the thruster side of it, um, that was actually more of like an average to a slightly above average. So the men came in at 5.5. Scale one to 10 and the women at a six. The reason why the women were a little bit higher is because 85 pounds is actually slightly, it's a bigger ask than 115 for the men. Um, for the men to have been equivalent, it should have been 125 pounds. I think we did see the men score a little bit faster mm -hmm. overall. Yep. And it could definitely come into this, this uh, weight variable, right? That in fact is a little bit lighter for the uh, men comparatively. Um, so the other thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna kick it back to you on Fran, was Fran was one of the workouts that came out highly correlated to height and weight. Um, long story short here, and I'll break this down on some charts, or I'll put the chart somewhere up here where we can see it. Uh, smaller athletes, particularly in regards to height, but also in weight, really excelled in Fran. It was a definite advantage um, to be a, a shorter range of motion here. Awesome. Um... Friendly Fran jumped out as being really similar to the last open workout. Um, mm, I, I think point. it was 20.5, it happened in 2019 in October. That was the workout that was 33 thrusters, 33 chest to bar, 27s, 21s, 15 nines. Much higher volume, but at that standard weight of 95 and 65. Uh, Scott, were these workouts pretty similar in results? Yeah, very correlated. So I'm looking at it right now. And, you know, pretty simply, we're going to have the um, athlete's time um, in 19.5 along the x-axis and the time in friendly frame along the y-axis, right? Um, very correlated. Probably the most correlated to any open workout we saw of any of the games workouts. The other thing that stands out, and if we put the chart up here, you guys will see it, uh, Matt Frazier killed this. Matt Frazier, this, this workout was made for Matt. Um, both in terms of what it advantages, but also in terms of where well, the guy's a freak. So, yes, he killed it. Definite outlier in the chart. Awesome. The next Metcon style workout uh, on day one was Damn Diane. Three rounds for time, 15 deadlifts, 15 strict handstand push ups. Men's deadlift weight was 315, ladies was 205, men's deficit was three and a half inches, ladies was two inches. Scott, tell us about Dan Diane. So let's start off with the volume again. Um, on the deadlifts, 45 total reps at 315 pounds for the men, 205 for the women, is actually a five on a scale of one to 10. It's a very average volume ask. Now I will say, and I don't have good metrics on this yet, um, what this doesn't take into account is intensity. This is a short workout, 
a lot of the focus and the time was spent on the deadlift. So yes, it wasn't a crazy volume mass, but the intensity level could have been really high here. Um, don't have that well measured. The, as far as volume goes, the strict deficit handstand pushups, even though it's a pretty small deficit, ranks in at an eight on a scale of one to 10. So at least compared to historical ask, 45 deficit strict handstand pushups was a, um, a, a bigger ask than the deadlifts. Other thing really quick, there was a, again, a correlation here, um, advantaging smaller athletes uh, where they tended to do slightly better. Again, it probably goes back to range of motion here. Uh, but I will say this was the last workout, and we'll touch on it more later. This is the last workout that advantaged the shorter and lighter athletes. Similar to my last question, uh, this event seemed very similar to, I believe it was 20.3, mm -hmm. the open workout that was in eight minutes. You had to complete Diane, 21.59 of deadlifts, 225 and 155. Kipping handstand push-ups followed by 21.59 of deadlifts at 315 or 205, paired with handstand walking. Did we see the same correlation between Dan Diane and 20.3 as we saw with Fran and 20.5? Yeah, great question. So they did the exact same analysis, just you know, 20.3 time on the X, um, Dan Diane on the Y axis, looked at the correlation. Definitely a relationship, not as strong as 19.5 and Fran was. Um, but strong relationship, still related, just not as related. Uh, why this is, I actually really don't know. Why would you think this is? Um, I think athletes are more capable of kipping handstand push-ups and handstand walking. Those are easier skills, mm -hmm. while the strict handstand push-up may require a little more um, strength to body weight ratio. Um, and then when you add in that deficit, it definitely kicks things up a notch and requires that upper body pressing strength. Some athletes might not have that as much as they're able to rep out kipping handstand push-ups and handstand walk really quickly, since we've seen those skills a lot more in competition recently. Cool, yeah, so not quite the same, but yep, very cool. Then we finished out um, day one with two monostructural tests. We'll start with the one rep max front squat. Athletes had 20 minutes to build to a one rep front squat from the rack. Okay, we definitely put the chart for this one because this really stands out. I'm looking at the chart right now. Put it up here, hopefully, or somewhere. Um, T is just at another level. So what I'm looking at right now is a chart that looks at strength to weight ratio. So Basically, how much did the athlete do on the front squat divided by their body weight? Tia, we have it over here, front squat at 313 pounds at a body weight of 128. It, you know, when you look at this chart, it's, that's the highest strength weight of anybody. Men, women, you know, men tend to have a little bit higher overall as an average, but Tia beat all the men. Um, it's just, it literally off the charts, you know, you see her, she's uh, off by herself on Little Island. It's her strength is unbelievable. The fourth and final test of day one was a thousand meter row for time. This was an all out sprint on the rower with times ranging from just under two minutes to about three and a half minutes across both genders. Scott, what do you have on this workout? So, well, two major thoughts here. The first one, this was actually really good for the taller athletes, you know, Fikowski and, and some guys in, in his realm. This was the workout that was also really correlated to height, but obviously advantaged the tall. Um, it was as correlated, just in the opposite direction, but as correlated as Fran was to height and weight. So those two, actually even a little bit more so when I'm looking at the numbers now. So it, it definitely balanced out, right? Definitely balanced out some of the advantages that maybe some of the smaller athletes got in Fran and Dan Diane. But, and here's what's really interesting, and we're gonna circle back to this at the very end, the row and the front squat both were maybe the least representative overall of these uh, entire seven workouts. So this entire phase one, I guess you'd call it, of the 2020 games, um, there's certain workouts that represented this phase better, and certain ones that didn't really have any correlation to the uh, final standings, and row actually probably ranks as the least impactful. Uh, Still the same number of points as in the other workouts, but the, the results here really didn't predict success overall. We'll get to that more at the end though. 
I did a little bit of extra analysis on the 1,000 meter row event. I went to the Concept2 website. You can look up their Concept2 mm -hmm. records. They have records um, for all the different weight classes and age groups for the 1,000 meter row. You'll see those on your screen right now. Um, what's considered lightweight versus heavyweight for men is 165 pounds. If you're under, you're lightweight. If you're over, you're heavyweight. So everyone in the CrossFit Games is definitely well into that heavyweight category. Um, there's been a lot of people mentioning how well Roman Krennikov did uh, on the 1,000 meter row. He rode a 248, which if you look at the graphic on the screen, that's about eight seconds more than the uh, heavyweight men's world record in the 19 to 29 age group. Um, there is something important to note. Krennikov is listed as six feet, I believe 210. Um, a lot of the heavyweight rowers setting these records are more in the 6'3 to 6'5 and 220 to 250 weight range. So he's significantly smaller than all of them. So to be able to get that close to the world record, really impressive. However, if you look at the women's, again, let's brag on Tia Toomey. Tia Toomey is the only athlete from the 30 women in the stage of the CrossFit Games listed under 135 pounds, which is the light versus heavyweight cutoff for the women. So a lot of the girls that placed these top scores were in the 150 to 160 pound range. Uh, Tia Toomey tied for sixth place at 321.3. And if she was under 135 while she did this, then she may have set the Concept 2 1000 meter lightweight women's world record for the 19 to 29 age group. If you check on the screen, the current listed record is 322 by Sophia Meekin. So uh, Tia Tumi may have uh, snuck under that by a few tenths of a second um, if she was un under 135 when she tested this. So that really jumped out to me as interesting. And again, incredible how well-rounded she is. She's crazy. Run squats, conditioning, and even these monostructural events. But you gotta hear of Sam Briggs too, right? She's only 135 for mm -hmm. listed, so if she just cut one pound, she tied Tia. Very different athletes there though, I would think. That's right, Sam Briggs actually held the world record for the 1,000 meter row, I believe, a few years ago, but she's up in age group, so she's in the 30 oh. plus age okay. group. And if you check the graphics on the screen again, um, those records are actually a few seconds lower. It looks like 318.8 huh. is the lightweight women's 30 plus record. So Sam Briggs was a couple seconds over that. Um, She's still crazy. Yeah, still amazing. <laughs> okay, moving on to day two of the CrossFit Games. There were, three there were three events, starting with one of my favorites, Nasty Nancy, five rounds for time, 500 meter run, 15 overhead squats, 185 for men, 125 for women, and then 15 bar facing burpees. This was the longest event um, of this stage of the CrossFit Games with most times in the 18 to 23 minute range. Scott, tell us about uh, Nasty Nancy. Yeah, probably my favorite workout um, from a number standpoint at least, right? Not sure I like doing it, but statistically love it. Why I like it is, and again, we're gonna circle back to this in a little bit, it probably represented the uh, 2020 games the best, at least the phase one. And it also, it was really well-rounded and it was an above average but balanced ass that everything it did. So what I mean by that is on a scale of one to 10, the run comes in ranked as a seven, as the volume mask, the intent there, not the intensity ass, but the volume mask. Um, the overhead squats, 185 pounds, 125 pounds, 75 reps, seven. And the 75 bar facing burpees, Burpee over an object is actually how I uh, created this metric. Ranks as a six on a scale of one to 10. So all above average ask, but nothing crazy, really well balanced, wide range of movements here. Um, like I said before, and I just want to touch on this again, and it's gonna be the same for Annie in a second, neither one of these were really correlated to height or weight or any of those factors that an athlete really can't control. So again, from a numerical standpoint, from a statistical standpoint, really like this here is taking out those variables that athletes can't control and puts it completely into their hands and what I think is a really well-rounded, balanced um, ask of them to test their CrossFit ability. Mm -hmm. And it was a fun event to watch, combining all those different elements, putting, uh, putting the athletes outdoors, outside the gym was fun to see. Next event was a handstand hold. 20 minutes, as many attempts as you need to establish a max time freestanding handstand hold. This was a brand new skill. This mm -hmm. had never been tested in any stage of the games. Um, I've never seen it tested at any local competitions or anything like that. 
So it almost seemed to me like the athletes that had the gymnastics background, like Katrin David's daughter, like some of the other ladies, um, they just did well on this. They practiced this, you know, throughout their life. While some athletes, they may have almost never practiced this until it was announced. So those times are just all over the board. Um, Scott, what do you think? So I don't have a ton of stats here. You know, like you said, it's really new. It's it's not something I have a lot of background on, but. The one thing I can say is it wasn't unrelated to the overall um, competition results, right? So what that tells me is it's actually a good test, and I think it might be a good test for two reasons. One, you know, a really common you know skill in CrossFit is the overhead vertical push strength. You know whether that's pushing, whether that's holding, whatever that is. Obviously, that was tested here. Um, and the other thing too is gamesmanship, right? You know how quickly can you adapt, learn a new skill? Um, and, and succeed in something you didn't expect and, and never really practice. And I think that was maybe on display here too. Awesome. Final event, another really exciting one. Awful Annie, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 of double unders with a heavy drag rope where the handles don't spin, made a little more challenging, a little more fatiguing on athletes, paired with GHD sit-ups and then five, four, three, two, one of heavy cleans. Those could be power or squat, but the weights were 275 for men, 185 for ladies. This ended up being a kind of mid-range workout, somewhere about eight to 12 minutes. Scott, tell us more. So, let's go over the volumes really quick. Heavy double unders, hard to adjust. Don't know the exact equation from speed rope to uh, heavy rope yet, but this is gonna come in at a six or a seven, right? Not really sure, probably a slightly above average ask as far as the double unders go. Um, the GHDs, we know much better there because we've seen this come up a few times. This was a huge ask. Now, that's not saying the athletes didn't compete this or complete this, you know, amazingly well, they're freaks, but 150 uh, GHDs was the highest we've seen in, in uh, competition. I think the previous highest was 2016 regionals where there's 120 total. Here there's 150. That ranks as a 10 on a scale of one to 10 um, in our volume mass metric. And then the clean, 15 reps total, not too many, but at 275 for the men, um, one, I lost it here, 185, 185 for the women, um, I need to fix that in my graphic, uh, it, it, that ranks as a nine as far as the weight goes, right? So overall, this averages out to a slightly above average, maybe an average ask in terms of clean for uh, the men and the women. Yep, that's all I had. Awesome. It was a really exciting weekend to watch. Um, the final standings, Matt Frazier in first by a wide margin. He won by almost 170 points. That's almost two full events. Um, Noah Olson, Justin Medeiros, who's a rookie to the games, Samuel Quant and Jeffrey Adler. Those are the five represented for the men. Women is Tia Toomey. Brooke Wells, only 35 points behind. So really small gap between first and second followed by Haley Adams, um, this is her second game. She's competed at the game several times as a teenager, including winning twice. Um, it's great to see her back as a 19 or 20 year old. And then Katrin David's daughter, who's won the games twice, and Carrie Pierce, who's been in the top 10 several years in a row now. So women's competition should be really exciting to watch. Uh, Scott, any general takeaways uh, for the full seven events? So what you can do is look at each individual workout and see, okay, how closely did that workout and the results in that given workout correlate to the overall results? And that can kind of be your gauge at how well that workout um, kind of embodies CrossFit or at least the overall competition that you went through. So here, and actually the results came out really clear and really distinct for both the men and the women and they lined up almost the same which tells me that this we're definitely onto something here um here what we see is nancy annie and fran with nancy being the top um really really correlated to the overall results much better than the rest of the workouts so i'm gonna we're gonna put up another graphic here to kind of show you what that looks like visually so what i'm looking at right now is the women's event five performance versus the overall performance the event five is along the X and the overall is along the Y. What you see is, yeah, of course, there's variation. There's some women who did better here, some women who did worse here than their overall placement, but there's definitely a strong relationship linearly between how they place in event five and how they place overall. 
going to show you another one now. Let me scroll to it. This is going to be, so this is the row. Um, and by the way, that five was, uh, it was Nancy. So, uh, just to be clear there. So that four was the 1K row. And this actually ranks as the lowest or the least representative of the overall competition. So what we have here, again, event four or the 1K row performance rank wise along the X and the overall performance along the Y. This is actually statistically insignificant. Um, there is maybe a slight linear relationship where you know if you did better in the row, you did better overall. But that makes sense because there's 100 points available in a 700 point competition. Um, but even with that, even with this being worth one seventh of the total points, there's again not a statistically significant relationship, and it looks almost random. If we jump back, I'm going to scroll through it to the chart that overall summarizes this um, and ranks each competition, uh, I'm sorry, each workout by the correlation to the overall competition results. Again, Nancy, Annie, Fran, really good representations of CrossFit. Hansen, Hold, and Damn Diane, maybe in the middle. Definitely still good, um, not as related to the overall results as some of the ones I just mentioned, but still good. And then you get down into the max front squat and the 1K row. They're not bad tests of skill. They're actually great tests of skill and they're really fascinating. I think we saw a lot of really interesting things in the data, but they're not really good representations of what you know phase one of the 2020 CrossFit Games was overall. It, they're a little maybe, I don't know what the right word is. I don't wanna say random because again, there are underlying skills, but they're, they're not maybe the fullest test of CrossFit and CrossFit ability. And I think that makes sense. Those are two single modality tests, while at the top of the chart, Nasty Nancy, Awful Annie, highest correlation to overall results, those are both triplets, and they both had that uh, traditional CrossFit structure of MGW, meaning monostructural conditioning, like running or jump ropes, mm. paired with a weightlifting movement, overhead squats or cleans, paired with gymnastics, burpees, or GHD sit-ups. So when you combine all those different elements, it makes sense why those uh, events would be most correlated to the overall standings. Um, Scott, any anything else before we wrap up? No, but I like it when a simple uh, formula like that kind of actually has <laughs> meaning and when you dive deeper into that simple formula and actually play it out in a more complex analysis and results, like, mm -hmm. it lines up. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, guys. We enjoyed watching. We're excited to see what happens in stage two of the CrossFit Games. Um, we're going to post links uh, in the description to all of these graphics. They're on the screen also. Um, follow Scott Fitness Analytics on Instagram. Um, let us know in the comments if anything is confusing, if you need clarification, or if uh, you have some other numbers that would be interesting um, to run through while we're waiting a couple weeks for the games. Thanks so much, guys. Later, guys.